Shalom, family. Shalom. Uh, we're going to be talking about the location of Jerusalem. And there are many teachings and videos circulating about Jerusalem being in various um, locations all over the world, basically. And so we want to kind of bring a little clarity to that. Yeah, right now um, you have people saying that it's in Peru. Some saying it's America. Some saying South Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, originally, we did uh, see a video years ago uh, where there were some brothers who were saying that it's not in the location where the Jewish people are claiming it is, but it was in very close proximity to there. Right. Not as far as everyone else is putting it. And so we can understand if there are doubts but we have to look to scripture. We can't look to our feelings or emotions on this because right now, um, especially those who are claiming that Jerusalem is in America, uh, there is absolutely no biblical proof of that. So what we want to do is we want to use the scripture. We don't want to use yes. um, any maps drawn by the same people that people are claiming are deceiving us. Yes. Now, before we get into all of this, um, there are some very important uh, statements that we want to make. Yes. We don't want anyone to perceive this as um, bashing anyone. That is not our goal here. A lot of people have messaged us and left messages and links yes. on our videos asking us to address this or basically telling us or stating these things as fact. Yes. Some of them believe that these other locations are Jerusalem and some are asking for clarification. Right. And so with our disclaimer, we are not bashing anyone. Yes. Um, just because we don't agree with other teachings doesn't mean we're bashing. Uh, many of you get that confused. You say, well, how can we all can't come together and um, just teach together and do all of these things? Everyone is not teaching the same thing. That's and right. if we are bringing clarification or if we don't happen to agree with what someone is teaching, it doesn't mean that we are bashing them. The enemy actually uses that to try to really uh, discourage others from coming forward. Yes. Because you don't want to be perceived as bashing, but we are to cry aloud and spare not. Yes. Okay, anyone who gets offended by us putting our two cents in here, um, we, we're sorry, but we have got to bring forth the truth, especially since uh, we have people who follow this ministry who are being confused by yes. all of this different information that's being put yes. out there. Yeah, we kind of got to bring a little clarity to it. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I want to say is this here, okay? It's, a, it's very important that we understand what the words say and what the word what. Yah requires of us, okay? Mm -hmm. He requires that we study his word for ourselves, mm -hmm. okay? Um, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved, a workman unto Yahuwah, okay? It need not to be ashamed. But then it says, Rightly dividing the word of truth, Yes. okay? Did it say rightly dividing maps or articles it didn't say that no okay so we have to look into Yah's well you want to answer to where Jerusalem is guess what it's in the word right. if you dig in the word the word will scream it at you mm -hmm. you'll see where it's at it's actually very very visible yes okay this is why we knew right away that all of these other locations that are being spouted off do not line up yes. with scripture now Rightly dividing the word of truth is kind of like this here, okay? As you study Yah's word, you get into more and more knowledge and understanding, right? You're actually building something in your understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Knowledge. And it's like these blocks here. And as you put them up here, notice how nice and easy these blocks begin to line up. If you can see them here, okay? So we just... Build these blocks, right? Now, let's say all of a sudden you come across one block that, or one bit of information that doesn't really fit. Okay? But you like this information. This information excites you, right? But at the same time, you're like, I, I, I'm going to make it fit. Force it. I'm going to force it. <laughs> so you go on and you, you try to force it on there. Oh having a hard time with it but you're gonna make that thing fit right mm -hmm. okay got it up there so then you're gonna keep on going 
Keep building on false and information. And you're going to keep on building, on right? On top of it. On top of it. And then eventually, what's going to happen is this here. If you don't do that right, and you come back and you realize, oh, you know what? This isn't fitting because now I'm noticing that it's becoming extremely unstable as a result of it. So then now I need to, I got to get this bit of information out from under here. Okay, so I'm gonna try my best to get it. Got from, it. Oh mm -hmm. man. Didn't work. It doesn't work that way. So you gotta be careful when you're gaining knowledge, getting information. You gotta make sure it's all fitting, that it doesn't throw everything off, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, that being said, one of the awesome things that Yah did, he said, I'm gonna have to keep myself a witness. Mm -hmm. And that witness is Egypt. Yes. Mm -hmm. Egypt is the witness. He said, I'm going to make it so that everyone on the face of the earth, is, ain't no doubt about where Egypt is, is it? Do you have any doubt? None whatsoever. None whatsoever where Egypt is. So that being said, you can sit back and say, well, we know where Egypt is. So pulling up a map of Africa, you can point right to Egypt. And we know it wasn't called Egypt. It was called Mizraim. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but we could go and point right to it because all those monuments there let you know Egypt is there. You, there's no one that's sitting back thinking Egypt is in Hawaii. Although we have heard of people <laughs> saying that Egypt is in America too. Yeah, of course. So these doctrines are out there. People yes. are trying to say that Egypt is in America, is, in, yes. is down in South America. Yeah. But the Most High left that witness. Even for us as Israelites, he left that witness because it was Egypt that helped us to actually believe that there was some truth to us being the Israelites. That's right. Because when we looked on the walls That's right. and we saw the hieroglyphs and we looked at the slaves. That's right. We saw that they were black. That's right. Because all of the movies showed white slaves in Egypt. Yes. But when we saw the images and we said, wow. Wow. They were black. They were black. Those were our ancestors. That's so the right. Mosai left Egypt as a witness. Egypt is the anchor to all of this information that we are about to give you. And it's going to leave no doubt at all That's as right. to where Jerusalem is. Yes, right. Now, when you look at this map of Egypt, right, or this map of Africa, where is Egypt? It's at the top part of Africa. Yes, it's now, in Northeast Africa. Northeast Africa. Now, when you look at where South Africa is, it's at the bottom the very bottom. The distance is close to 4,000 miles. Yes. That's a long ways, isn't it? Yes, it is. 4,000 miles is a long ways, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm saying this because I want you to understand the actual distance from Egypt to what we refer to as Israel today is only about 400 miles, mm -hmm. okay? Which is an easy distance to walk, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot easier than 4,000 miles. <laughs> That's right. Now, before we get too deep into this, yes. we already established that Egypt is the anchor. That's right. And in scripture, we're going to show that as well. That's right. But I wanted to just point out some very undeniable truths and facts in which yes. we're going to cover these in the scriptures. But I'm just going to throw this out there because some of you don't have patience to sit through the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're not going to be that long. We're not going to yes. be that long at all. But if you understand certain events that took place in Scripture, you'll say, well, then it's impossible yes. that um, Jerusalem is in South Africa or Peru or even in the Americas That's based right. on the location of Egypt. This, right. this is why we said Egypt is the anchor. Okay. Ask yourself this question. When Mary and Joseph fled with the baby Messiah, Yahusha, the mm -hmm. one who the world calls Jesus, when they fled with him, where did they go? They went to Egypt. They went to Egypt. And so if they were leaving from our lands, Jerusalem. Yes. Wouldn't it have been very strange for them to travel upward 4,000 miles, almost 4,000 miles from South Africa to Egypt? Wouldn't that have been very strange? They traveled on foot, so it's in proximity. Another very important fact is when the Israelites sold their brother Joseph into slavery. Did they travel upward 4,000 miles from South Africa to get to Egypt? 
<laughs> no, they did not. Another very important fact is when the drought came to their area and Joseph was already in the land of Egypt, they had to bring their sick father, Jacob, to the land of Egypt. Is that correct? Would they have traveled 4,000 miles <laughs> with their sick father all the way up from South Africa to get to Egypt? The scripture is actually going to show you just how close Israel is to Egypt. Yes, and we're going to go over some of the same scriptures that she, she spoke of. We're going to bring those scriptures up and look at exactly what was said. Mm -hmm. But those points, have to, you have to really analyze these things, right? Mm -hmm. So now... Let's go to the scriptures, okay? Yes. Let's go to Ezekiel, first of all, because Ezekiel gives you a clue here, mm -hmm. okay? Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 26. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse, verse 26. 26. Yeah. Okay. It reads as follows. You have also committed fornication with the Mitzrayim, your neighbors, great of flesh and have increased. I'm sorry, have increased your whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Okay, so now he called, he, he was talking to the Israelites and he told me, he said, the Egyptians are your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Now we can agree, think about it. He would be referring to Egypt as their neighbors if, if uh, Israel or the children of Israel were in South Africa. Mm -hmm. You can't call Egypt your neighbor. 4,000 miles is not a neighbor. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, let's look into some more of these scriptures because it's very important that we get this. Now, prophecy is key too. Okay? Yes. Because we know there's a particular prophecy in Revelations that kind of tell you where some places are. Now, watch this. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Revelations chapter 16. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 16, and let's look at verse 12. Read verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out the vial upon the great river Pereth, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay. Now, Pereth is Euphrates, just like when we mentioned um, uh, Mizraim, that was Egypt, okay? Mm -hmm. So, Parephas, Euphrates River. Notice it says that the great river Euphrates will dry up, right? Mm -hmm. To make way for the kings of the east. Now, wait a minute. If the river Euphrates is down in South Africa, what's east of South Africa? The ocean. Mm-hmm. Or if it's in the interior of Africa, mm -hmm. because there were various That's locations right. that um, one of the presenters were putting different things all over areas of um, right. Africa. Now, they were saying that Jerusalem is in South Africa, and they showed an interior location for the River Euphrates, right. in which it was speculation based on some things that were named by uh, European cartographers. And so we can't allow uh, maps that were hand-drawn by Europeans, the same people who we are claiming deceived us, we can't make it as though their articles and their maps actually circumvent or supersede the Bible. Yeah. We have if you, to if you show mind. me a map, then, then let's make that map, make sure that map is lined with scriptures. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, because those maps, when you look at them, even some of their locations of Jerusalem weren't even consistent on all of the various maps that we were presented with. Okay, right. one thing we have to keep in mind, too, is these people, when they go into lands and regions, they name and rename things yes. constantly. Um, there was a reference to uh, the Atlantic Ocean being called the Ethiopian Ocean at one time. Mm -hmm. That is just further proof that they are always naming and renaming things because it was called the Ethiopian Ocean at one time, but they renamed it at some point in history to the Atlantic Ocean. And so right. this is why we have to understand that just because we find or see some maps where they have handwritten the word Jerusalem, keep in mind too, those were not the real terminologies or names of these places. That's right. These were these are modern names, as we just showed you, the river Euphrates, in which they showed something um, of Euphrates on a map. It wasn't called the river Euphrates. That's right. Okay, it was called Parath. 
So now when you look at it, it says these kings are going to come from east of Pereth or the river Euphrates. If if the river Euphrates is in South Africa, what's or east? Or the interior. The of interior Africa. Africa, what's east? Now you're talking about over near, um, uh, what is it, um, um, those nations of in Africa that's on the east side, which is over near, uh, what's the, uh, Madagascar and over in those areas. You're talking about other African nations. Other African <laughs> nations, that's right. So then that's, look at this though, right? It's just to make way for the kings of the east. But what are you talking about here? What is this passage talking about? It's talking about the battle of what? Armageddon. Proof is, go to verse 16. Read verse 16 there. Okay, and he gathered them together into a place called the ivory tongue, her Megiddo. Okay, and what well, some would say the Hebrew tongue, but the ivory tongue, mm -hmm. um, her Megiddo, okay, which is talking about Megiddo mm -hmm. is actually a place. If you look it up in the Old Testament, you'll see it's a place, Megiddo. Matter of fact, it's the same place where Ahab was killed, remember? Mm -hmm. Megiddo, right? Ahab. King of Israel mm -hmm. in Megiddo, right? So now I'm saying this because I want you to look at this map. When you look at this map carefully here, right? And you see where Israel is on the map. And you see where Megiddo is, right? Now look at where the Euphrates River is. And it says the kings of the east. What's east? Look at the map. You see where east is. You see where west is, right? And north and south. These kings are going to come from the east and they're going to cross the river Euphrates and meet over to attack Israel. And it's going to happen at Megiddo. Look at where Megiddo is. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what the scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. So this is why we got to look at these things. We said, well, wait a minute. They ain't going to come from South Africa, right? Or they're not going to come from North African area and go all the way down to South Africa to for the battle of Megiddo, right? So that's why we gotta be, we gotta really look at these scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now I got one more very important scripture I want you to look at, right? This is uh, chap this is Second Kings chapter 23, verse 29. And watch this. Second Kings chapter 23, verse 29. Second Kings 23 and 29. Yes. Reads as follows. And in his days, Pharaoh Noko, I'm sorry, Pharaoh Necho, king of Mitzrayim, went up against the king of Asher to the river Perath, which is the river Euphrates. Euphrates. And King Yoshiahu went against him, and he slew him at Megiddo when he had seen him. Now... Pay attention. Now, let's look at this map again, right? You have Pharaoh coming from Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. And he's coming against the king of where? Assyria. Now, you see where Assyria is? You see where Egypt is? Mm -hmm. And where do they meet? In Megiddo. Mm -hmm. This is the word. They cross what? At the river Euphrates, which is also in between the two countries. Mm -hmm. And they come together and... This particular person got slewed where? In Megiddo. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's why I say you, you, you can't get away from these scriptures because the scriptures are actually telling you where Israel is. Now, the scripture talks about, we did this in a previous lesson just recently, um, deceiving and being deceived. Yes. Okay? And it's not that people set out to deceive. Right. Sometimes they actually believe the things that they are presenting. Okay. But when you stray away from scripture, then things no longer make sense. That's right. And you actually send out a spirit of confusion. That's right. Because when you look at this scripture now, which we very clearly showed you the uh, situation between Egypt and Assyria and where they were going to do battle, which is right, right beyond Euphrates That's in right. Megiddo. You see on the map that it makes sense looking at it from this context because That's right. Egypt is that anchor. That's right. Egypt is the anchor that shows you where all of this stuff is located in close proximity and it makes sense. It makes but sense. if you have Egypt here, but you're trying to say that it's down here in South Africa and 
Um, there's going to be this battle between the Assyrians and where's Megiddo all in there? Where's Euphrates? None of it makes sense anymore. Yeah, none of it makes sense. It's all scattered according to what was presented. That's right. Everything is scattered in different regions and none of it makes sense. None of it fits. But when you have people who are new, who are seeking information, but you're not using the Bible to present this information, you're just using clips. Yeah. I want you all to understand, again, we are not attacking the young man that you all um, showed the link to. We are bringing you truth according to the Bible. Now, many of the scriptures that were used, they were not used in context of what was being talked about. There were many yeah. subjects brought up, some of which were true, such as uh, those people that are in the land of Israel today are not the true Israelites. That's true. That's true. Okay, they were talking about um, how they switched um, um, our heritage and took our heritage and all of this, that, and the other. That's true. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start mixing a lot of true information in with other information, that is when you bring... Um, confusion. falsehoods and confusion right. and leaven because you're mixing truth because we That's all right. can agree that those people in the land today are not the true ancient people. They're not descendants of the ancient people. Right. We can all agree with that. That's right. But when you start presenting other facts in the middle of truth, you bring confusion. And so what we're trying to show you are scriptures as it relates to the location because the video was meant to show you the location of Jerusalem, but all of that other information was put in there Yes. to, in my opinion, and it may not have even been intentional, but it was there for confusion. Yes. Because you looked at the things that were true and that made your mind consider that the rest of this was true as well. Yes. So we're gonna get into more scripture that actually show you that there is no way that Jerusalem can be in any of these other locations other than at least near, because there was another point made about the size of the land that they're claiming as our land. Right. Now, we agree that all of that, what, what they're showing is not the boundaries. The That's scripture right. actually talks about That's that right. too. We're gonna get into that too. Yes. Know? One thing I want to bring out too, just like I was showing you on the map where Assyria and Egypt came together and fought and they um, um, and fought and, and the, and the typical king was killed in Megiddo. Mm -hmm. Well, you remember when we did Write It Out For and we talked about how the Israelites were killed, the king of Assyria carried them across what? The river Euphrates over into Assyria. And when Israel um, um, left, they went back across river euphrates but they went into a further country which means they went back they passed israel mm -hmm. on their way and went into a further country which was africa mm -hmm. <laughs> we we talked about that see and the scripture clear you can see it in the scriptures right so that's what i mean by we gotta look at all these things there was another point too in the documentary i remember this mm -hmm. and so when you get to saying things and spouting off things you have to be able to back that up with facts yes the Limba actually carried their oral history for thousands yes. of years. And they, too, stated, if you remember the clip from there, where they traveled down through those regions and went into the interiors of That's Africa right. from Assyria. That's they right. talked about their travels and how long it took them to get there. So are we now to say that these um, people from the, from the Limba tribe don't know what they're talking about? They have kept their oral history alive all of these all of years. These years yeah. And so are we now to believe that some little hand-drawn maps that were presented to us are to supersede not only biblical facts and facts, biblical yeah. history, but also supersede the oral history of the people who actually lived this? Yeah. We can't just look at information that we find on the internet. That's right. Um, little maps and articles, because there were articles and maps. And it was presented as though these were more factual than the Bible. Yeah. That's how it was presented, family. Yeah. And so, again, we are not trying to um, offend or hurt anyone, but our people need to know the truth. Yes. And the truth of the matter is this. You have to study your, to show yourself approved, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And when you study... Are you to study only maps and articles that were written by the very Gentiles who we claim we can't trust? Or 
Do we go to the Bible for our source? That's right. You got to rightly divide the word. Rightly divide the word. You got to rightly word. divide. You got to rightly divide. So, wait a minute. This ain't line up. This just got to line up. This. You got to rightly divide. You know? Yeah, not rightly divide maps. Rightly divide the word. That's right. Because even though some of those regions may have had the words Jerusalem and Hebron and all of that stuff on them, that doesn't mean that those are the ancient places. Because guess what? There are actually places here in the United States called Jerusalem too. That's right. They were just named that's this. Right. Just like you have Main Street that's in every state. Every state mm -hmm. has a Main Street, a 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th Street. Uh, many states have a Martin Luther King Street. I mean, there that are all... Mean, and that don't mean Martin Luther King used to live there either. That's because you got a street <laughs> right. name after them, right? Right. They were exactly. always naming things. And remember, it wasn't called Jerusalem. And we look at the kingdom right. of Judah and we say, oh, this must be. But it still doesn't line up to the biblical location because all of this stuff, again, was in close proximity right. to what? Egypt. The anchor Egypt. That's right. It was in close proximity to Egypt. Yeah, one thing I want to bring out, too, because they were saying, say I'm talking about the animals that's in Africa proves that, um, that that's, that's where... Um, uh, Jerusalem would be down where all the animals are. Well, first of all, let's go back to the scriptures, okay? We know that there were uh, Noah and his family, right, mm -hmm. were on the ark, and they brought all the animals to the ark, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in the scriptures, what did the scriptures say about Noah's ark? Where did it land? Let's go to that scripture. Let's go to Genesis chapter 8, and let's look at verse 4. Genesis chapter 8, verse 4. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Okay. Now, when you look up Ararat, right, look at the map, and you see where Ararat is, okay? Where is it north of where? Assyria, which is north of Megiddo and Israel. Now, these animals, once they came off of this, because it was a mountain, they were up on a mountain, right? When they came off of this, where do you think these animals would go? Do you think they would go north into Russia, into these cold areas? Or do you think they would migrate where? South. Of course they would go south. Think about this for a minute, right? We know for a fact that geese go south all the time. Mm -hmm. Because ducks. They, ducks, all kind of animals go south all the time because it's warmer. Right? Another point to be made, too, is this. Um, there was a time when the, the land that they call the Middle East today, we know that it's not the Middle East. Right, okay? exactly. We know that it's all connected, but that still does not make give us the right to say that all of Africa is the land of Israel. Right. Now, in Egypt and in the so-called Middle Eastern area, all of that land used to be very, very prosperous and green and yes. lush. How do we know this? Because the scripture tells us, again, when the Israelites, when their land was desolate, when it was, they were having a famine, where did they go? The Israelites left their land yes. and they went to Egypt. That's right. On foot, they went to Egypt. They, they even carried um, our forefather, Jacob with them into the land of Egypt and they dwelled there for a long time after that. And right. so why did they dwell in the land of Egypt? Because the Egyptians had grown a lot of food. They stored right. a lot of food. They put it away. And so when the drought reached all of those areas, what happened? The Egyptians had a lot of food put away during the years of plenty. Okay. That's right. So just because those areas are like that now, you have to understand something. It was prophesied that these areas were going to become desolate. That's why they are desolate. And That's so right. what do animals do by nature? Mm -hmm. Even in regions of Africa, where many of them are, when the area becomes filled with drought and famine, do the animals just stay there? No, they migrate in search of greener pastures and water, water. Yeah. and so to say that that is the reason that proves that this is where Jerusalem is that still isn't biblical because animals are doing what nature teaches them to do That's right. which is to migrate when times get rough what did the Israelites do when times got rough they did the same thing they That's migrated right. to another area that's right um, one thing, too, I want to bring out, too, is Abraham's land, the boundaries of Abraham's land. Let's go yes. to Joshua chapter 1, and I want you to watch this, okay, because I want you to see this very carefully. It's so clear. 
chapter 1, verse 4. Okay. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, I'm sorry, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Pethra, Pera, Euphrates. all the land of the Chittim, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall your shall be your coast. Now, pay attention to this, right? Now, it says, if you look at this map again, pay attention to the map here, right? Mm -hmm. It says that from the great river, right, from the wilderness. First of all, I said from the wilderness. Let's keep that. Let's get that in, in your mind first. From the wilderness. Where's the wilderness at? Let me show you this scripture here, okay? Before we go into this here, let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 3 and look at verse 18. This is Exodus 3, verse 18. I want to establish this fact. Okay. Exodus 3, verse 18. Yes. Okay. Page is sticking together. Okay, it says, And they, and they shall hearken to your voice, and you shall come, you and the elders of Yasharel, unto the king of Mitzrayim, and ye shall say unto him, Yahuwah Eloha, of the Ivram has met with us, and now let us go, we beseech you, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to Yahuwah Elohanu. Okay, so now, the wilderness was actually only three days' journey, are you hearing me, from Egypt. Now, I got another scripture for you, right? <laughs> Let's go to Exodus chapter 8, and look at verse 27. Three okay. days journey, family. Three days journey from Egypt to the wilderness. Pay okay. attention. Exodus chapter 8, verse 27. Yes. We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Yahuwah Elohanu as he shall command us. Right. Three days journey into the wilderness. So now let's go back to Abraham's land, right? Mm -hmm. Now in Joshua chapter 1, verse 4. Go back to Joshua chapter 1, verse 4. And look at what it says here again now. What does it say? From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Pereth, river Euphrates, Euphrates yep. all the land of Chittim, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. So now, Egypt is right there. It says three days journey into the wilderness. So it says from this wilderness... Mm -hmm. Even into the great river, river Euphrates, mm -hmm. the land of Hittites, and, and unto the great sea. What great sea are you referring to? He gave you a clue. Look at the map, right? Look at the map. So now, if you're where at the river Euphrates, look at the river Euphrates, mm -hmm. and you're going toward where? It didn't say south. It says toward the going down of the sun. Which direction do the sun go down in? In the west. In the west. Where is west on the map? Huh? You see it on the, the map? The great sea. The great sea. That's, that's exactly what he said in the scriptures. Toward the great sea. Toward the going down of the sun. Toward the great sea. Mm -hmm. That should be your coast. The great sea is going to be your coast. There it is. Right in the word of Elohim. And so... One thing that we want you all to understand, of course, that little sliver of land right. that is much smaller than what was originally promised to our forefather that's Abraham. That's right, exactly. And so when you all say, well, that, that's not enough land to divide and do this, this, that, and the other, we understand that. But you have to understand, again, what the scripture says. Yeah. The scripture tells you where the borders were going to be established for what yes. was promised to our forefathers. And it has shrunk because... Things have changed. Our land has been divided. And it has been pieced off and taken by this one, that one, look, and look the at, other. Look at it's been pieced off. Look, you get you get you get um the Ishmael Ishmaelites, right? Mm -hmm. The Arabs, they are they 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 already occupied a great deal of the land, right? Mm -hmm. And you get um uh, the modern Israel and all of these other nations that's up around in that area are all occupying that land. So it was divided up. So when you look at all of those regions, not just yeah. Palestine and Israel. Even parts of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Exactly. When you look at that whole section that we just named, yes. where it said from, where is that verse again? It says from the wilderness and 
this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the yeah. river Euphrates, and all of the land of Chittim, and unto the great sea. Look at everything in that region. That's right. That is the land that was promised. That's the land that was promised. That's and right. And as you see, it has been divided up, and it's being called different things now. That's right. Exactly. And, and you know, it's amazing when you look at this. That's why we said Egypt is the anchor. Let's go to that scripture. This is Matthew chapter 14. I want you to pay attention to this, right? Mm-hmm. Matthew chapter 14, I'm sorry, chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 14. It says, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Mizraim. Okay, so he took them by night and departed into Mizraim, right? Now, it don't say nothing about no long 4,000 mile journey. No. Okay, that would have been a harsh journey because look at verse 20. What does verse 20 say? saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Yasharel, for they are dead, which sought the young child's life. So Talking he, about Herod. Yeah, so he left Egypt, and he left um, Egypt to, I mean, I'm sorry, he left um, um, Jerusalem to get away from Herod, because they, wanted, they didn't want, to, want them to come after the young lad, right? So then they leave, and then once they wait until, until Herod died, then all of a sudden he took, the angel comes tell them, okay, now go back. To, to Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. If this was 4,000, that would have been an 8,000 mile trip. And that on would foot. Have, on foot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With, with a baby? 4,000 miles leaving. Yes. 4,000 miles back. See, That's none right. of it makes sense. It That's what we're talking sense. about. Right. Those is not fitting. The pieces are not fitting. That's right. It's it is not, not fitting. fitting. <laughs> it's just right. not fitting. And so we cannot make it fit. That's right. We can't make it fit. And then there's a lot of other issues, too. Think about this, right? You remember when the centurion came to Yahushua HaMashiach? The Roman soldier came to Yahushua HaMashiach and asked him to heal his servant? Okay. Remember, Israel was occupied by Rome, mm -hmm. right? Israel was occupied. Rome's kingdom circled the Mediterranean Sea. All the lands around the Mediterranean Sea was Rome at one time. At the height of the of, of the greatness of Rome at this time was when they covered all of those areas. And Jerusalem was also covered too. Mm -hmm. So how is it if Jerusalem or Israel is supposed to be in South Africa, where are the Roman um, land, landmarks. I mean, there are no. But if you go around the Mediterranean Sea, you see Rome everywhere. Mm -hmm. You see, you see marks of Rome everywhere, all around the land. You see the ruins of Rome. You see the ruins. That's right. Now the presenter, they show some very insignificant markings on a map and some some very small things yes. like clay items. Or something, something very small and minute. I can't remember yes. exactly the, but you can't present this as proof that Rome was in South Africa. No. You can't present this, especially when you have biblical references to Rome, okay, being in the regions that it is, yes. and you have huge chunks of landmarks, right? Buildings that are buildings. Yeah, we ain't talking, we ain't talking about a little trinket that somebody that ended up in South Africa. We're talking about landmarks. Right. This is not a landmark if you find a little trinket with some markings on it. A little clay pot or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I wanted to address the issue of the children of Israel wandering for 40 years. Now, yes. there was a point made that you, it would have taken them 40 years to get to uh, South Africa from Egypt. Okay. On foot, it would only take three years for the children of Israel to get to South Africa on foot with all of them traveling. It's kind of interesting. I thought about the caravan that mm -hmm. is marching right now down in Mexico trying to get up into the United States. Looking at them, I said, wow, that is the perfect example because it's thousands of them traveling on foot. And they're only traveling, I think it was only a thousand miles, right? Um, so far, are they a year into it yet? <laughs> you know what's amazing about that? You know that? what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and so, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. <laughs> and so, are they a year into it? No, but they are still approaching, right? Do you think it's going to take them 40 years? Okay, let's break it down. Okay, they're only traveling a thousand miles. Mm -hmm. And... 
uh, from Egypt to South Africa is 4,000 miles. Okay, and so they're only going one fourth of the mile. One fourth of the mile would mean if you divide that 40 years, it would it should only take them what 10 years based on the math that was presented in the presenter's video. And it I, should take I, them, it should technically yeah. take those people that are in Mexico on foot 10 years to get a thousand miles down in, uh, from Mexico up into America. It should take them 10 years based on the math presented by the presenter. But what I, the point I was trying to make was this, it would only take three years on foot for the children of Israel to get from South Africa to Egypt, if that was indeed Jerusalem, but we know it is not. What is going on with the wandering is this. First of all, let's get the definition of wandering. Yes. It means travel, traveling aimlessly from place to place. Okay. Mm -hmm. now like, the reason, like going in a circle pretty much. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. What was happening with the children of Israel is this. It took them 40 years because they were wandering aimlessly. The Most High hid the promised land from them. And that is why it took them 40 years. It's not that it took them 40 years to travel. They were wandering for 40 years. I find it funny though how how um, um, they were saying basically that it would have taken Israel 40 years to go from um, Mizraim to South Africa 40 years but they said that Yahusha and marrying them well, well then he would have been 80 years old Ooh. You see what I'm saying? If it, if, so, if it was a 40 year travel. That's right. That's right. That's right. So when you look at all this, you really got to look at the scriptures and just dig into yes. those scriptures. Because the scriptures, it says it all. That makes a lot of sense. It pretty much sense. says it all. When you look at it that way, I got to say that again, family. So if it was a 40 year journey from Egypt to Jerusalem, as they're claiming it is in South Africa, if it was a 40 year journey, then that means Yahusha would have been, he would have been 40 years old, but he didn't even live to be 40 years old. Yeah. I get what you're saying. He didn't even live to exactly. be 40 years old. That and he time, made the trip twice. Made the trip twice. Like going there and coming. And yeah. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why I said we talking about 80 years. <laughs> you know? So again, it is not fitting. It's, that's it's just... not fitting. It is not fitting. Not fitting. It's not fitting. <laughs> if it right. was a 40 year journey, it right. does not fit. So again, that's right. That travel that they made, um, according to scripture, is only a three-day journey. That's right. From Jerusalem actually, to Egypt. Actually, from it's a three-day journey from the, Egypt yes, to the wilderness. To the That's wilderness, right. yes. To the wilderness, right. And so, which is still not far at all right. from the land of Jerusalem as it is now. But That's it would right. be a long distance from South Africa That's right. or from Peru or from America, for those who are claiming that it's in Peru or America. That's right. And we know the children of Israel, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. And then when it was time for them to go and spy out the land, guess what? They could just go spy out the land because it wasn't that far. Mm -hmm. Again, they were 40 days out there spying out the land, and then they came back to the wilderness. Mm -hmm. That's because the wilderness is right by the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right by See that? Right by the land of Canaan. Now, Keep that in mind. That right. The wilderness is right by the land of Can Canaan, right. which is the land of Israel. That's right. Okay. Which later became the land of Israel. That's so right. all of this 4,000 mile stuff is not making sense. It's not making sense. Now, I got another scripture for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go to 1 Kings. Okay. Chapter 4. It is. Okay. Anyway, it says, And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of, Philist of the Philistines and unto the border of Egypt and brought presents. Uh, they brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. Mm. So there you go again. Egypt was near the land of Israel because Solomon reigned that area. Mm -hmm. He reigned over that area. He didn't reign over South Africa. You see. Let's read that again. It says, yeah. and Solomon <laughs> reigned over all the kingdoms from the river Unto the land yeah. of the Philistines. Yeah. Now, where are the Philistines today? Yeah. In the land of Palestine. That's right. Which is one of the regions of Israel. That's right. And then it says, unto the border of Egypt. Egypt, right. 
Wow. Again, Egypt is that anchor. Is that anchor, That yep. keeps it all intact. Yep. That's one of those pieces that help you to remember and understand the locations of things. It's yep. all throughout scripture where the Most High is using Egypt as the landmark to determine proximities yes. from this and that. Egypt is that anchor. And we can't yep. get away from that. Can't get away from it. Now, you remember the story of Joseph, right? How he was sold, right? His brother sold him. Let's go to that scripture. Now, watch this scripture. Mm -hmm. This is Genesis chapter 37. And this we're going to look at verse 28. Okay. Genesis 37 and 28. Mm -hmm. Then there passed by Mitz... I'm sorry. Then there passed by Midianim merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelim. Ishmaelites, for, yeah. For two for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Mitzrayim. <laughs> so when you look at that, right? So it wasn't Egyptians, these were Ishmaelites, because we know Ishmaelites are occupying that land to this day, right? Mm -hmm. Ishmaelites are occupying that land. And where were Joseph and them at? They were out in the wilderness area, right? Mm -hmm. Joseph was out there and they said, hey, we're going to lower him in the pit because they were angry with him, right? So yes. they lower him in this pit and they were just passing by. And they said, hey, we got somebody we'll sell y'all. Mm -hmm. And they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites who then took him to Egypt because they were all near Egypt. Okay, mm -hmm. there it is again. Oh, I got another one. We got one more for you here. Okay, let's go to Genesis. Watch this one. Chapter 45, and we're going to look at verse 25 and 26. Genesis. Chapter 45, 45. yeah. Okay, 25 and 26. And they went up out of Mitzrayim, and came into the land of Kenan unto El Yaakov, their father, and told him, saying, Yosef is yet alive, and he is governor, governor over all of the land of Mitzrayim. And Yaakov's heart fainted, for he believed them not. Okay, so wait a minute. The land of Canaan and Egypt are near each other. Wow. You see that? Yet they again. went up out of the land of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan until their father. That's where Jacob was. He was in the land of Canaan. Mm. Now, that wouldn't have happened had he been 4,000 miles away. And furthermore, let me ask you this question. Why do the Messiah and his parents need to flee 4,000 miles to get away from Pharaoh? Huh? 4,000 miles? You don't have to go 4,000 miles to it get away from sense. Pharaoh. Yeah, just you, you only need to go a few hundred miles, not no 4,000, right? Now, here's another scripture I wanted to reference, too. is in the Testament of 12 Patriarchs. It says, And Reuben died, having given his commands to his sons, and they placed him in a coffin until they carried him up from Egypt and buried him in Hebron, in the cave where his father was. Wow. Now, there was a reference made to Hebron in the presenter's video, and they were showing it down in an area that is not um, where we believe it to be today. And so this scripture right here shows you that it couldn't be where they are showing it on this map. That's right. Again, that, that name that was on the map is just another region that these people who the cartographers use, they just put these names all over the place. But that That's doesn't right. mean that that is the ancient location. Because as you see, um, Reuben was carried up from Egypt. Why would they travel, what, hundreds or even thousands of yeah, miles, thousands of miles yeah. with his body to get him to an area that the presenter is trying to say is actually Hebron? which is not the biblical location. And so we've right. got to keep these things in mind uh, when we are presenting information to people. If it's not lining up with scripture, I don't care if it is an ancient map. Yes. Those maps do not supersede scripture because biblical markers of all of these locations were already established. They are in very close proximity to Egypt. And we yeah. can't get away from that. And like I said, like I said before, 
You gonna present a map? Make sure that map lines up with the word. Right. Okay. You can show a map. Mm -hmm. We don't mind showing a map, but it has to line up with the word of Elohim. And when it doesn't line up with the, because because in all actuality, the word of Elohim is the true map. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yes, it it's is. the true map. The word of Elohim is the true map. That's how they build their maps in the first place. In the first <laughs> place. That's right. That's how they knew where everything was because they say, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Based on this scripture here. Then Jericho has to be over here. How do you think they found Jericho? They actually found Jericho. They found Megiddo. They found ruins of all of these places. Even the ruins of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Actual Babylon. They found to be where? In Iraq. Mm -hmm. Which is just behind the temple that Saddam Hussein built. Mm -hmm. mm. His palace. Wow. Isn't that something? A couple of other points I wanted to make too. Um, the presenter was saying that the people of Africa, South Africa, should I say, are Canaanites. And they were saying that to make things fit. It still does not fit. Those people in South mm. Africa, um, many of them are Israelites, right? And there was a reference made to the jackals, okay, and the land being desolate. And that that proves that Israel couldn't be our land because it's occupied. But then they said South Africa is the land, and then they showed desolate lands of South Africa. Well, get this. We're going to show you some desolate lands that still remain in the land of Israel. That's right. Okay. Now, in one token, you're saying that um, the lands of South Africa are desolate, but South Africa is occupied by millions of people. That's right. So you can't use that in that reference. And then you talked about the jackals. And when you look at the actual scripture, it wasn't jackals. <clears throat> it sure wasn't. The term wasn't even referencing jackals. The, it's actually tanin, okay? And it says serpent dragon or sea monster. Now, at first they presented that information and they talked about the jackals and then they gave you a reference mm -hmm. to jackals actually being in South Africa, but not in the land of Israel. But then they came up, came back and they said serpents, dragons, and sea monsters. But you already made the connection that yeah. there are jackals in South Africa as proof that that is where Israel was. Which we know there are plenty of serpents in um in Israel, mm -hmm. <laughs> in those areas. Okay, but when you use the term jackals and then you say there are jackals in South Africa, there, it was actually not even jackals. It was sea monsters or dragons or serpents. Serpents. Okay. You know what's amazing? I want to say this real quickly. Mm -hmm. Did you see the news the other day when a serpent came out of the welling wall? Mm hmm So there's plenty of serpents there. Mm-hmm. And so you, when, you, when it fits the narrative, you use the term jackal. Mm -hmm. When it didn't fit the narrative, you remove jackal and put sea monster. But then you talked about the desolation in South Africa. But, but remember, the land was supposed to be uninhabited, right? Mm -hmm. You have millions of people in South Africa. That's right. There are just certain spots that are desolate, just like in the land of Israel That's today. Right. And not just the land of Israel. Remember, our borders were a lot wider That's than right. what they are actually claiming today. That's right. Based on the scripture we gave you about Abraham, yes. remember the Most High gave a significant border to him that would be our land, which it was taken. Now, yeah, now watch this, right? Mm -hmm. He told Abraham, every place where your foot has walked, we're going to give you this land. Mm -hmm. So you mean tell me Abraham walked 4,000 miles down to South Africa and back up and around to Egypt? No. The scripture told you where he walked, yeah. and it was nowhere near South Africa. It's nowhere near it. That's right. And so, again, there is there are desolate places in um, the land of Israel today. That's right. Just like it is in South Africa. But again, back to those um, South Africans being Canaanites that don't line up. The Canaanites were stricken with what? Mm -hmm. Leprosy. That's right. And so now we're trying to, in order to make this all fit, what you're doing now is you're now taking away those South Africans who are a part of the 12 tribes of Israel mm -hmm. and you're claiming or declaring that they are Canaanites. And it just doesn't fit. Yeah. It just doesn't fit. Yeah, it doesn't. So that being said, you know, it's, it's like, like we said before, the scriptures actually, and, and guess what? This is only a few of them. Mm -hmm. There are a lot more scriptures that reference Egypt and Israel and the closeness between the two. 
Mm -hmm. If you do your research, right? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of scriptures that talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. And so we, we just got to understand that the scriptures, it, it tells you everything. It sure does. And one other thing that I think is, is very important to mention, didn't the Bible say that we would not be in our land in the last days, that we were going to be exiled, we're going to be put in various regions. Trodden the Gentiles, right? Exactly. It's going to be trodden down by them. And so if all, and this is for those who believe that um, Africa is our promised land, this is something different than what this person is presenting, but those who believe that Africa is our promised land, well then that would just totally annihilate the passage that tells us that we were going to be kicked out of our land until the time of the end. The scripture right. specifically says that we would not be in our land until the time of the end. Right? As a whole, yeah. <laughs> As a whole, exactly. And right now, Africa is filled with the tribes of Israel. That's right. And they've been there for thousands of years. Yeah. And so to try to make it all fit and say that this is the wilderness, most of those most of those tribes over there have been there for thousands of years and if we were to be exiled out of our land how then were they in our land all of this time because the scripture says that when we go back into our land mm -hmm. that is going to be a garden of Eden before us and desolation behind us yeah but right now, the people in Africa are experiencing poverty. Uh, they are being ruled over by Gentiles. And one of the prophecies is that when we rule in our land, when we actually go back into it physically, that Yahushua HaMashiach is going to rule a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So are you all saying that our people were never kicked out of our land like the Bible says? Are we to discard those portions of Scripture? Okay, are we to get rid of those portions and who's been ruling all of this time? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we also know that Africa wasn't even called Africa. It was called something else previous to That's that. Right. And so when you try to put all those maneuvers in there, oh, it's a part of the tectonic plate and all of yeah. this, that, and the other, it's still more confusion because the regions were defined in scripture very clearly. That's right. The regions that were promised to us were defined. The whole of Africa was not promised to us. That was the land that they traveled down into where no man dwelt before, yeah. as we stated in um, Whited Out Part 4. Mm -hmm. So then this, this whole idea of Jerusalem being down in South Africa is really not lining up at all with scriptures. Not at okay? all. Okay, because we know that Egypt was close to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Egypt was very close to it. Okay. As a matter of fact, I have to, I have to give you the scripture again. It said, Thou hast committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors. Mm -hmm. We have presented many scriptures that show you just how close yeah. the two lands were and are. Many scriptures. Yes. We don't even need a hand drawn map to show you this because again, those hand-drawn maps didn't even use the original names that were given for these mm -hmm. locations. And these hand-drawn maps were simply names that these same people that we claim we shouldn't trust, those are what they named it. That's right. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more we can say, but I think uh, the biblical references should be enough for you to understand that Yes. Uh, none of it makes sense when you try to uh, to switch everything around. Nothing matches up with it's scripture anymore. When, anymore. You put, yeah. when you put Euphrates over here, Jerusalem down there, and Hebron over here, and uh, Mount yeah. um, Zion here, and you, when you're, sw you're putting it all over the place, now the scripture no longer makes mm. sense. That's yeah. right. Rightly dividing? Rightly dividing the word. The word. One last thing before we go, because yes. we're doing this, and I know um, we, we didn't want to spend this much time, but because of what was stated about the people in South Africa, I wanted to show in Scripture where the Most High scattered the Egyptians at one time, but he didn't leave them in that place. Yes. He brought them back. That's very important. Yes. He brought them back to their land. So they yes. are not scattered among our people, okay? Yes. And I'm talking about the Egyptians specifically. Okay, Ezekiel 29, starting at the 8th verse, it says, Thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I will bring a sword upon thee, and cut off man and beast out of thee, and the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste, and they shall know that I am Yahuwah, because he hath said, The river is mine, and I have made it. 
Behold, therefore, I am against thee and against thy rivers, and I will make thy land to be of Egypt utterly waste and desolate, from the tower of Syene even unto the borders of Ethiopia. So all of that lush green land, the Most High made it a waste yeah. and desolate. Even to this day, it still is. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be inhabited forty years. And I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate. And her name and her cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate 40 years. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. Yet thus saith Yahuwah, at the end of 40 years will I gather the Egyptians from the people whither they were scattered and I will bring them again to the land of Egypt and will cause them to return into the land of Pathros, into the land of their habitations, and they shall be there a base kingdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it shall be the basis of kingdoms. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations, for I will diminish them that they shall be no more rule over the nations. And, and, and what do you see to this day? Mm. Do you see Egypt rising up over the nations? Egypt one time ruled the world, right? As we know it. And, 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 but what do you see? He said, no, I'm going to bring them back, but guess what? They're going to be so abased. And to, and, but you know what? That was something that puzzled me and a friend of mine years ago. We, I remember him. We were sitting back. He said, man, something, something is strange about this. He said, well, when you look at the technology in Egypt, was so awesome that they were able to do the pyramids. And to this day, they couldn't duplicate the pyramids with all this technology and knowledge they got today. They couldn't duplicate the pyramids of Egypt. So what happened that they've been brought down so low? Y'all happened. You see, the scripture just told you. <laughs> yeah. He said he was going to make them a base people and they would yes. never rise again. Now get this. The people in the land today are Arabs or Middle Easterners, as they call them. But guess what? The black, the so-called black Egyptians are still there. Yeah. But they are diminished. They're in the background. They're in the yeah. they're they're in the shadows. They ain't yeah. running nothing over there. That's Just right. like the most high said. In his word, he said that they will never rise again or rule over the nations. Are they? Mm -hmm. But he used the land of Egypt as that anchor. That anchor, yeah. So that no one could say this, that, or the other about scripture. So now all of this stuff, the information that was presented mm -hmm. by many of those who are claiming Jerusalem is in all these other areas, it all just <laughs> fell apart. Yeah. Because the scripture does not support it. Don't support it at all. Well, family, I hope this, um, this helped a lot of you all that were a little confused about it. And trust me, like I said before, there are many, many, many more scriptures just look them up yourself. Just look them up. It's Study there, to show so yourself many. approved. Yeah, That's so right. many of them. Yeah, this is only a few that we, we, we pulled up here. But anyway, on that note, we're going to say Shalom. Shalom, family. Are your Bible notes scattered and lack any real order? Do you have a difficult time thumbing through old notes and spending hours trying to find studies that you've done months or maybe years ago? Well, there's a solution. Tabs which stands for Thoroughly Arranged Bible Study, or Torah and Beyond Searching, is a Bible workbook that will help you organize existing Bible study notes or start from scratch with new studies. This workbook is packed with great ways of logging your studies in a chronological way to help organize your notes into an easy to read, easy to follow format. With the self-arranged table of contents, you can log your studies by page as you complete a study on a particular subject, this allows you to go back to that study without the painstaking task of trying to locate it. You are the creator of the table of contents, so you will be able to easily find your study notes without hesitation. Also included are a fasting and prayer log to help you plan and record your results. To order your TABS workbook, visit us at www.TorahAndBeyond.com.